Who believes insulin is good? I believe insulin is good. Who believes it's very good in type 1 diabetes? Everybody, <laughs> of course. It's life-saving. And so therefore, the slide that you use from the DCCT and EDIC is redundant. Yeah. What? Oh, who? Oh, okay. All right. Uh, so who supports, simple question, the use of insulin to help your patients long term? And by long term, I mean actually improving their outcomes, cardiovascular outcomes. Oh, pretty good. So what's that? Almost everything. So you believe that the cardiovascular outcomes, mortality, will be benefited by putting people on insulin. I'm not talking about these little beta cell things, you know. That, you know. I'm talking about real things that matter to the patient, right? Okay. All right. So the very simple question, does insulin improve outcomes? Does it improve? Does it stop? I have, to, I have to use this. Does it stop your people from having, patients from having this? No, 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 no. Let's just, you know. Does it stop your people, patients from having this? And does it stop your people from, patients from dying? That's a simple answer, question. Answer, no. And no, don't believe me. Don't believe the dogma, right? Let me show you the evidence. Right, so the... So these are actually, again, not type 1, but type 2, which is what we deal with most of the time, yeah? So these are the big t type 2 trials, Accord, Advanced, DADT, all used insulin. The majority of patients were on insulin. I'll show you the data, right? Majority were on insulin. Why? Because they actually had to achieve excellent glycemic control. So I have no doubt that insulin would lower the glucose right down to 6%. Fantastic drug. But does that? improve outcome. Does it improve your cardiovascular endpoints, mortality and cardiovascular mortality? No, no. Accord actually, it worsens your outcomes. So it makes it worse. You put people on insulin, you get their HbA1c down to 6.5%. What happens? More of them die. So is that a good thing? No. Okay. So, and then, actually this is another set of data. This is actually the only study that I have seen that maybe might benefit for people um, being treated with it for aggressive glycemic control, UK PDS, but actually that was only from the metformin arm. It wasn't the arm that was using insulin. Okay. Um, and all the other studies you can see, proactive, advanced, DADT, no benefit, accord, worsen outcomes. 28% increased cardiovascular mortality. Why? Accord. Yes, people on metformin, SU, TZD, about 77% were on insulin. So whilst we achieved the HbA1c reduction, we didn't achieve the cardiovascular outcome benefit. And the reason is because, as Dr. Ayuki said, you know, we're all focused on this, getting this glucose down, right? Because um, we believe that this is good. But what we forget is that there is actually lots of other things, bad things that happen to these patients when you try to drop their glucose with insulin. And what's the worst thing that can happen? And it, he, he did show you, I can see, he showed you a slide that showed benefit of these new agents on weight. And he kind of just said, oh yeah, you know, they're better. Right? But actually, when you put people on insulin, 77% were on insulin, what happens to them? Weight gain. They gain more than 10 kilograms in weight. Right? Now, is that what you want to do for your patients? Glucose might be better, but obesity, right? So, and that's consistent as a signal that you see here. You see, you know, more than 10 kilograms of weight gain, 39% increased cardiovascular mortality. If you only gain a little bit of weight, you don't get that much worsening. And again, if you may gain more than 8 kilograms, 25% increase in mortality. So really, honestly, you have to look at this therapy and say, what am I trying to achieve? Right? And that, that's the question you have to ask. So what if you could lower the glucose without the weight gain? Wouldn't that be a nice thing? And you can. In fact, actually, let me just quickly, this is one of the cases I have that, that I can take. 
Let me show you the data that, that just through the children. This is the liraglutide and cardiovascular outcomes in type 2 diabetes. Published in the New England Journal of Medicine, the lead of those. What does it show? Improvement in the primary outcome, which is a composite of cardiovascular, stroke, and actually admission without uh, mortality, better. Death from a cardiovascular cause, better for the liraglutide arm. Death from any cause, better for the liraglutide arm. The only thing that didn't achieve differences in one case or the other. But what I want you to look at is the placebo group. What was the placebo group? Was it people with no treatment at all? Or was it people with, on insulin? Actually, they were on insulin. Right? And despite that, you, what you see here is the fact that they were randomized to liraglutide and achieved a certain target actually improved their cardiovascular outcome. And in fact, HbA1c reductions that we all focus on was very little. It was only 0.4%. Right? Because in the, in the active arm, why? Because you, you don't get as much of a benefit in glucose reduction. But you get this weight loss, and you get a slight drop in systolic blood pressure. And as a result of that, you get these increased cardi better out cardiovascular outcomes. Not only that, you also see, actually, improvement in nephropathy. There's a signal which isn't quite, I can't explain just yet, but it, there seems to be a little bit worse than the retinopathy in the liraglutide arm. But you can see for nephropathy, there is actually a 16% reduction. This is independent of ACE inhibitors and, and blood pressure lowers. The other study is once weekly semaglutide, which is, again, a GLP-1 agonist. Here, actually, primary outcome, much more significant. Again, myocardial infarction. In fact, here, the non-fatal stroke was also significant. Death from cardiovascular cause was. But overall, what you see is HbA1c reduction of about 1.1 to 1.4%, weight 2.9 to 4.3 kilograms, systolic blood pressure 1.3 to 2.6 millimeters of mercury. And again, nephropathy was re reduced by 36%. Um, Retinopathy again was worse than that. We don't know quite what's going on there. <coughs> but you can see overall cardiovascular and renal outcomes were improved. And the last study, the Empereg, which is the SGLT2 inhibitor, not uh, an injectable. Once daily, oral, again, you can see primary outcomes significantly better. Um, death from cardiovascular cause significantly better. But again, the placebo group has got the active treatment, which is insulin and other drugs. HbA1c, 0.5 to 0.6%. Again, you know, not like uh, we're getting with a insulin. It doesn't get down to 4% reduction of HbA1c. But do we need a 4% reduction in HbA1c? I would argue no. If you can get a weight loss that goes with it and a systolic blood pressure drop, then you will get improved cardiovascular.